from there, you're going to go ahead and have your uh, defense against Gabe Gonzaga, but then you get to another contract impasse with the UFC, but this time it's with Zufa and uh, things don't go swimmingly with you and Dana. And uh, when you're on the outs, it looked like you were teasing a big fight with Fedor that never really happened. What yeah. was going on during this era and, and why didn't the Fedor fight ever happen? Well, um, I, I knew that Dana and company weren't, weren't being honest with me about a lot of things. Um, I kind of took them to task over that. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of on the outs with them from day one because I fought for my ancillary rights in my contract. I had that new management, battle management that I mentioned earlier, and, and they educated me on what ancillary rights were and what was in this contract. And so we held their feet to the fire for the new contract, the one where they forced me to fight Pedro the, the second time. We got our own ancillary rights. We, we had a favored nations clause. There were a bunch of things that, that we pushed and put into those, that, that contract, that version of that contract for me, which was great for me, but it shined a light on the loopholes in, in the contracts and, and the adversity of the, these contracts are really bad. They're, they're, they're pretty horrible contracts, honestly, as uh, from a fighter's perspective, they're great for the company, but they're not so great for us. Right. So, I pushed that issue with my management, um, fought for those things. So I was kind of on the wrong foot with them right from the start. And then again, called them to, took them to task over some of the, the stuff they were, they were saying and doing uh, back then uh, after I beat Gonzaga. And, uh, you know, that put me in a position to, I had to stand up for myself, basically. Uh, I resigned from the heavyweight championship and I walked away from, from the UFC I, the one fight I wanted was the Fedor fight. He, they, the most rankings had him rank one and me rank two. You want to be the best in the world. You got to fight the best in the world. So I told them, I want that fight. They were in negotiations with him. The negotiations broke down. They wanted M1 global kind of owned him and they wanted a co-promotion. The UFC and Zufa were not willing to do a co-promotion. So it wasn't going to happen. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm resigning as your heavyweight champion. I'm going to go find a way to make this fight happen. Uh, they filed injunctions. Uh, I would have had to, and they were basically trying to bleed me in money. I ended up spending about $500,000 of my own money oh. with lawyers and whatnot to try and find a way to make that fight happen. And at some point, you know, I, I was 40, almost 45 years old. I needed to really look at what was going on. How much time did I have to continue to compete uh, as, as an athlete at that level? I didn't have time to spend a year fighting this thing in legal battles and spending money. So I just let it go. So, all right, well, if this fight never happens, it never happens. I'm going to come back and fight. That's what brought me back to the UFC and put me in, in the fight with Brock Lesnar. You know, uh, speaking of fighting, do you remember when Rico Ciparelli wanted us to uh, have a grappling match? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would have been, would yeah. have been interesting, huh, Randy? <laughs> yeah, it would have been fun. You know, we never got to compete. You were one of those prototype heavyweights that wasn't the giant, great, big heavyweight. You know, you, you obviously you wrestled at 220. So, so you weren't the great, big, giant heavyweights that, that we were. I used actually to. weighed 208, Randy. I, yeah, I wasn't were, very big. Yeah. Yeah. You were this new kind of prototype heavyweight that, that I think became uh, a lot of guys followed in your footstep and, and realized they could compete at heavyweight too. Um, I think it would have been fun if we, we would have had a chance to compete, but. Now we're just officially old bastards. So I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, you're right, Randy. 